Hey hey, it's me again, Cecilia. And today, like the title suggests, I'll show you the steps I take to make a chapter, specifically chapter 28, of my webcomic, Lemon Soda and Coffee, available on Webtoon Canvas. Links in the description if you want to check it out. Now, this speed paint is going to be a little different because a lot of the footage had to be edited down because, well, there's quite literally 22 hours and 34 minutes of footage, and it would be just an hour long video if I showed you the whole thing of line arting and coloring and everything. So you'll just have to bear with my editing here. <laughs> it's been 8 months since I've started publishing my webcomic, and I've received quite a few questions about how I make a chapter or tips and tricks on creation. While I absolutely do not think that I know everything about making a comic, I can share my own process that I found the most efficient to me. I recommend finding your own pipeline of creation by looking at how different artists do it and compare them to each other to find the best way for you, because the production of comics varies a lot from one person to another. I always start off by writing my script. The script is basically a giant word document that outlines the chapters. This is where I write all the dialogues and events that happen from chapter to chapter. I like to write my script in bullet form with rough scene directions, camera angle explanations, and emotion explanations in it. As you can see, this document, at least in my case, is very rough and messy, and sometimes even incomplete because I get better ideas later on. The script is basically the whole backbone of the story. It's what holds everything together. No script means no story. This is always the most stressful part of creation to me, and I write and rewrite the script several times. Which is one of the reasons it's usually riddled with typos and spelling errors because the ton of revisions it goes through, and because I am very clumsy at writing. I get writer's block easily, and it can get pretty discouraging, so I try and write out as many chapters as possible in one sitting, so that I don't need to write a script each and every week. When I am satisfied with the script at hand, I move on to the next step, where I actually start drawing. This next step is drawing out the thumbnails of the chapter. The thumbnails are small, rough drawings of the chapter, drawn side by side on a giant canvas. It helps me get a good overview of the chapter, and helps me arrange the panels in a coherent way. These drawings are very, very, very basic, and they determine the pacing of the chapter, although they don't set everything in stone. The thumbnails determine the rough angles and positioning of the characters, although there are times when I just draw floating heads, whenever I know it's just a headshot, to accelerate the process. Good slash understandable thumbnails are very important. Since I am the only one working on a chapter, I can be a bit looser on them, since I know what the drawing is supposed to be. But if I had assistants, for example, they would probably need somewhat better sketches or explanations of the scenes to understand better. Arranging my thumbnails like this is helpful to make sure the episode is roughly the same length as all the previous ones. I try to keep them equal to not put too much work on me for the week, but also to keep it consistent for the readers. On good days, I can make these thumbnails in about a half an hour but there were times where I was more tired or distracted, and they ended up taking almost the entire day. After I am done with the thumbnails, I transfer them onto a webtoon-sized canvas. I use a 960 by 20,000 pixel canvas at 300 dpi for a nice resolution. I use the nifty built-in paneling tool that Clip Studio Paint has that creates borders you can't draw past, and it largely accelerates the process. I then make a separate group to put all the word bubbles in that I place above the panel borders. I'm sure there are other ways of doing this step, but I found that separating it like this crowds up less the layers, since I can just minimize the group. I use the word bubble creator tool for the dialog boxes. It is simple to use and quick, so I prefer it over drawing each individual bubble. And, um, well, when you work on a weekly webcomic, there are places where you gotta compromise to make the process faster. Things like the panel borders and 100% unique word bubbles at all times becomes more of a chore and doesn't really add anything special in my opinion. 
Once I've done that, I set off to draw the detailed sketches right over the thumbnails on a different layer. I always use red color for this. I'm not sure why, but that is a color code I established to myself simply because I enjoy sketching in red and I think it looks nice. Don't mind me being weird over here. In this step, I make the rough doodles of the thumbnails actually look like the characters they are supposed to be. This is also the step where I draw and establish the concrete angles of the background. Because backgrounds take way longer to make, I tend to avoid doing high detail backgrounds in every single panel. It is very tiring and that's why most of my panels have flat colors with colored screen tones instead. I feel like once you've established the setting in the beginning of a scene, as long as you make sure the reader understands that the characters have not moved from the location they are in, it is not necessary to make high detail backgrounds all the time. Though, it does depend on the type of story it is. In the case of lemon soda and coffee, since it is lighthearted and funny most times, a simple background style fits well because the point is more the characters and their emotions rather than their surroundings. But if it were, for example, a serious fantasy story with magical backgrounds, the screen-toned high-saturation backgrounds might not pass as well on most panels. It is always a case-by-case -case situation. Some people might draw detailed backgrounds because they like that, and some people might not. And that's okay. This is usually the stage where I despair if I have made convoluted or complicated angle choices for the panels, and I do require moral support from friends in those times. They literally cannot help with my problem, but they'll listen to me and cheer me up regardless. So thanks for that, guys! This step is one of the longest ones because it requires the most thoughts about the drawing aspect and how things should look like. I try to get this done in maximum of two days work time. The next step is the cleanup part. By this cleanup step, I usually don't have to think anymore about the layout of the panels or the anatomy of the characters. By this step, all of that should have already been resolved. Though, because I can be very indecisive at times, it does happen that at this stage, or even after having finished a chapter, I end up doing major changes, but that is really not the norm. I do all the line art of the characters and backgrounds, and it's usually a pretty relaxing step, nothing to think about really, besides making everything look nice and clean. This step usually takes me one to one and a half days to do, depending on the number of panels and the complexity of them, and also how tired I am by this point. The next step is the flat colors of the chapter. This is one of the faster steps in the process, because it's literally just dropping in the colors in the appropriate areas. I use the bucket fill tool for this step. Not all colors are determined from the start. Most basic colors have a saved color palette, stuff like Axel skin color, hair color, eye color, etc. Basically, all characters that are reoccurring in the series have a color swatch, except of course for their clothing because they always wear different clothes, so it's pointless to keep track of that. But for new things that may never really pop up again, or at least not so often, I gotta come up with a color for. For example, in this chapter, I have locations I've never drawn before and more background characters than usual. I kind of make up the colors as I go along. I've found several classroom references, but I found that most had quite bland colors and that would be out of character from lemon soda and coffee because of the colorful color palette I usually use. So I improvised and instead of making the back wall like white for example, I opted for a friendly pale yellow color. All other colors were also keeping in mind this same fact. If I had used less saturated colors, the all-in-all -all emotion of the scene would have been entirely different. I always keep in mind this balancing act of colors that makes sense for a given location, mood, time of day, etc., and the style of the series. Like I said earlier, lemon soda and coffee usually has quite vibrant colors. So for any standard scene, that is a norm, and if I deviate from that, it may show a shift in emotion, 
temperature, time of day, or mood, so the colors need to be coherent with the point I'm trying to get across to my readers in a given chapter. On good days, all of this takes only a few hours to a half a day to do for me. The next and last step of my comic creation process is the shading. By this point, I am usually quite exhausted and many times I end up spending my entire Sunday on just this. Every chapter has their different feel and needs. Some have more backgrounds and some have less backgrounds. Some have one kind of lighting and some have a different kind of lighting. It's always a bit different and the shading needs to be adapted to that. In this chapter, for example, for a while towards the middle slash the end, they are under a tree. So I had to take in consideration of how trees cast their shadows on people under them. Luckily, I found a brush to emulate just that and didn't have to mess around too much. But that is an example of a very specific need that doesn't happen in every chapter, but that is interesting to look at and gives a different type of warmth to the scene. While I make sure that I stay as consistent as possible to pre-established coloring rules, I always try to improve on it so every chapter is unique and looks better than the previous one. As I draw more chapters, I discover more efficient shortcuts to make them look good without overworking myself over panels most people don't look at for that long. My main way of shading for the chapters is a multiply layer where I shade with a light purple color. I find that to be the most fitting color to use for most shading, for no other reason than I just think it looks good that way, and I've used that color in all previous chapters out of personal preference. I do switch it up from time to time. In Sunset, for example, I use a more reddish pinkish color, and in dark environments or emotional reaction panels that are like sad or scared or anything, I use a dark blue. It is usually the shading that cements the exact emotion the character is experiencing. I mean, their facial expressions or body language should be quite clear about that already, but the coloring and shading of it wraps it all up with a little bow and serves it on a platter as the finished product, hopefully making it as clear as possible. And this is my process. I finish it all up by adding the end card on the chapter and voila! The chapter is done! Before publishing a chapter, I pass it through an online page cutter service called Croppy, since on Webtoon you gotta publish separate pages. I just upload it to the website, it analyzes the page, and spits out a zip file containing all the cut pages that I need to extract and upload to Webtoon. On good weeks, I may finish a chapter by Friday night, but I often end up finishing on Sunday night instead, because I tired and I try to do way too many things at the same time. Help. So, when I upload on Monday, I take a break and relax usually. Creating comics is fun, but the reward can sometimes be less than you think. So taking a break once in a while is a very important thing, so you don't get burnt out. You can check out the finished product of this episode of Lemon Soda and Coffee on Webtoon Canvas or on my Patreon where patrons get to see the new high-resolution chapter a few days ahead of time. Thank you very much to all of my patrons, including Jace, Alberto Jimenez, Robert, Negromaki, Britt, and Kelly Ganning. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more art-related videos, and visit my Instagram at made underscore by underscore Cecilia, or Twitter with the same handle. We've also now got a Discord server where we hang out and chat. All links are in the description below. Thank you very much again, and I'll see you next time!